Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Planner, how it integrates into Microsoft Teams, and specifically how to use it and set it up for meetings. So by the end of this video, you'll see how to set up your planner to capture meeting agendas, both for your next meeting and future ones, how to handle actions coming out of each meeting, and also how to name your planner, why that's important, and how to see all of your tasks in one place, no matter which planner, which channel, which team they've come from. My name's Gav Jones. I am Transformation Manager for a Fortune 500 company. My job is basically training people how to get onto Teams and use the full Office 365 package and get the most out of it. So all these tips have come from seeing real life struggles in a large organization and hopefully they'll be of use to you as well. So remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified about our new videos coming out. We've got a new one coming out every Tuesday. And then let's get into taking a look at Planner. So I'm in the test team here in Teams and let's just go ahead and quickly set up a new planner. So we'll come into the channel that you want the planner to appear in. Click the plus icon at the top and select planner. So the first thing to note is that you can have multiple views of one planner throughout your team. So you could have pin a planner tab in multiple channels all pointing back to the same plan which is what we've done in a couple of teams actually so if you're in a project team say um, but you've got different splits you might want to set one planner and have this different channels quickly able to view that that one plan but for our main team what we've done is put a planner in every single channel a separate one because we've split it down by account or customer so we want to create a new plan in that instance and then the name is quite important which i'll show you later but you want to name it something to do with the team and the channel because if you just name it actions or planner when you go and view your own tasks where it's showing you where those tasks have come from. If all the plans are called actions, you won't know which plan or which team or which channel those actions have come from. So for right now, we're gonna call this one testing planner. Hit save. And then by default, you get one bucket called to do and then you can add as many buckets of tasks as you want. So think of this as your to-do list. And then to add a new task, you can do it as simply as typing the task name straight into this little box here. So set up planner, we could do as a task for us. We'll set the due date today and assign it to myself. Add task. And then we've got one task added there. If you were in a meeting, and let's just fill this out a little bit, you would just hit the plus, say call to uh, review new proposal, not a great action. Um, set a due date, move for the next meeting, and then pick someone else, but we'll assign it to myself again. Well, that should be Paul in that instance. Add task. And if you're doing it live, as you were, you were uh, getting actions you'd probably just click keep clicking the plus enter all the information add tasks you've got everything out in draft pretty quickly then each task is a card so you can go into the card see all the information we've put in so far you can change the bucket in here if you wanted to we've only got one so far so that's why no one's showing you can update the progress if you were the person that's been assigned the action and um, if you can't start it yet you could put the start date into the future um, but if you're the one assigning the action, especially from a meeting, it's best practice to go in and put some description around what was the chat that prompted the action. Because sometimes the action itself is a bit unclear, especially once you've been to sleep after the meeting and you can't remember why that came about or actually what is needed. So you can put a description in there. You can add a sub checklist if you wanted to. So if Paul's to review the proposal, maybe Dave 
send proposal over, um, we'll review it and then email Darren final verdict. So there might be a few actions within it and you can add attachments. So if you click from SharePoint, you can just pick something straight from the team or you can link in any other attachment you want. So you can get that from another team, another file channel, um, another SharePoint site or even just a website, whatever you want to put in. And then text to display is just link or something more descriptive. So comments is where you can keep a track of what's gone on on that task. So it'll give you underneath the comments a time stamped comments section. So if you needed to keep that task up to date, you could do so in the comments bit. So you can have multiple assignees. So if you, especially if you've got a checklist with a few people to do something on, you might want to assign that to more than one person. What you need to be careful of when assigning something to more than one person is that if they don't know that they're only to tick the checklist and not the main, yeah, I've done it completed to get it out of their queue, they'll complete the task for everybody, even though all the steps might not be complete yet. So ideally we want to have a separate task for every person that's assigned to avoid that. It's a bit of extra work, but you can easily copy a task with the three dots there or on the main screen with the three dots there and copy task. Say which things you want to include or, or not when you're copying it. And you can put a new task name in there and then assign it to somebody else. Okay, so I'd recommend keeping the to-do list at the side. How to set it up for a meeting is you might have next meeting agenda there. And what we've been doing is adding a task for each agenda item. So meeting open, finance review, um, maybe marketing section. Uh, demand update. So adding every, anything that you want to run through in the meeting as an agenda item. You can then, as I said, everything is a card. So you can either think of it like an action or you can think of it like a card. So we can just drag and drop the order if we want to rearrange the meeting. And then as we're getting closer to the meeting, people can go and add in their own ideas about what they want on the agenda. Probably best practice is to put an idea of how long you want. So if we go ahead and put the time in the headers for each section, then the person that's going to arrange that meeting and slot everything around knows how long each section is going to be. People have put too much time onto the next meeting, then the facilitator could then drag that card onto another meeting, which I'll go on to later. So as well as saying what the section is and the time, obviously you can then go through and assign that to a person, which is especially useful if you've got guests coming. If you do have guests coming, remember to forward them the meeting invite separately rather than just relying on planner. You can assign them that section and then you can even say that the due date is going to be the date of the meeting. So you can put the due date, say it's going to be the meeting's going to be on 26. We can then go and put the due date as the 26 for all of these. So that anyone that's assigned knows that that is for that meeting. So as you're getting close to the meeting, you might want to rename this bucket so people know what's going on and where it's going to be. But please remember to send them the meeting invite as well so it's blocked out in their calendar. Otherwise they're likely to get stuff coming in. They'll forget they're supposed to turn up to your meeting. So is this making sense so far? Comment plan below if you're liking the look of planner so far. And we'll continue on with some more tips on planner right now. So we've got the next meeting agenda in. What happens when these agendas have run or you've got actions coming out of that meeting? So either you can put the actions into this bucket, which is what we've seen people do, or I would recommend putting the actions in the to-do bucket. So it doesn't really matter when the action was created. You don't need to link it to a specific meeting. If that was important, you can still do that through the start date anyway. 
So if we add a task that's come out of this uh, meeting agenda on the 27th, say, so that's just say prepare for October meeting. Again, not a great action. Go into that card, and if we set the start date as the 26th, we know that then that action has come from the meeting on the 26th, if we're just using this for team meetings. So you can always go back and see where it's come from, really. Um, or you could even put that in the description. So coming out of the 26th September meeting, this action was around from this discussion. So I'd say do that rather than trying to keep buckets of each meeting. When you finish that meeting, I guess you need someone to go through and tick that you, all of these have happened. Say we ran over time and actually the marketing section and demand section didn't get done. I'd put a bucket in saying future meetings and push people off the page. So you got really clear that that's the to do list of everything that needs doing in that channel. Here's the next meeting agenda that's sort of getting close to being set, especially if it's a monthly or a weekly meeting. And then future meetings bucket is just to push people over to this. So you could have meeting ideas bucket. You could have October meeting. If you knew where that was gonna be and what date it was. So let's say the 20th of October, I don't know if that's a weekend or not. Um, and that's gonna be in London. And then you might have November, November meeting in, uh, I don't know, Cardiff. So you might have a few meetings you wanna plan out. I would say let's keep those off the side of the page and keep everything focused on the next few. You can drag the buckets around as well as the tasks. So you might want meeting ideas right at the end. And then in this example, to finish this off, so we ran out of time and these two didn't get a chance to present we could just drag these over onto the October meeting section instead. At some point then you'll want to get rid of this bucket because that meeting agenda has already happened. So either you can just drag all the sections back onto next meeting and update that header to be it's actually the 20th of October or probably easier is just to delete that entire bucket and then move your October meeting to the left and then say this is now the next meeting and again go through and fill out assign someone that's going to present to each section and the due date as the date of the meeting so if you're a guest and you've only got one action coming through as one meeting agenda item you know what date that meeting is for so the other option is if you wanted to have view of what previous meetings agendas have been which possibly you want to do is to do the opposite of what I just did. So don't delete that bucket, maybe drag it to the end and just have a section called previous meetings, say. Again, you can still, if you set the start date or the due date, you can still go through and see which meeting that agenda was for. So I would say that's a great way to set out your planner, both for actions and regular meetings. If you wanted any other buckets and to split your to-do list down, you can still do that by having as many buckets as you want. Just be mindful of how you set it out that people don't want to scroll across for ages. So that's why I've set just the next two biggest things. So your to-do list and the next meeting in your view and then push everything else off to the right because you don't want to keep scrolling to the right all the time. You want to keep things that are more urgent or more relevant to now to the left-hand side of your planner. So let's just go and have a quick look about how these show up in your own version of planner. So down the side, there's a more apps button. Pop that open. That's recently changed actually the way this looks. Um, but there's an option for planner. If that's not there, you can go through apps down here and install planner for yourself in Teams. Um, but that's already there for me. So click planner and then it by default it comes into my tasks. Default view is by progress, so not started in progress completed. And remember that everything in Planner is public to everybody else that's in the team or wherever that plan is set. So you probably want to keep it updated with your progress. So once you've started something, best practice to put that into in progress. So it moves for both in your view and for everyone else that might be reviewing that plan. And here's where we can see the name of that plan being really important. So we called it Testing Planner. I know that that's in the testing channel of the recap team. If there were lots of other projects I was in, all to do with testing, 
I probably want to name the planner something to do with the project and the fact that it's testing. So we've got some real life ones from uh, Malt's Meeting and Actions. I know where that's come from, that's fine. Um, there's one plan that we had down here that was when we first started on Teams and we just called the planner actions for that project. If all the planners were called actions, I wouldn't know where that had come from. So that's what I was saying earlier, in this view, this is where it's really important about what you name your planner. So you want it to do something with the team and or something to do with the channel that you put that planner in. But everything that you can do in planner in the main view, you can do in your own view here. So activities where if someone assigns you something now you'll get pinged in Teams. Um, it's only if someone else assigns you the task that you'll get notified. But you do get notified in the activity feed and it appear in your chat when you get pinged. You also get an email by default to say someone's assigned you a action. And then you can see every plan that you are in, which for us is a lot because we've got a planner in every single channel in our main team. So guys, hopefully that was useful. That was our first look at Microsoft Planner in Microsoft Teams, how to use it for meeting agendas and actions that we've seen in real life across a large team of over 130 people for the past year. So hopefully those tips will be useful for you as well. If you did like the video, remember to like and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already to be notified about our upcoming videos coming out every single Tuesday. So what did you think of Planner? Let us know in the comments below or let us know in the quiz if you're likely to use Planner as part of your team or your meetings. We've seen how Planner and Microsoft Teams are great ways of planning out your meetings, either using Planner, Wiki in a previous video, and obviously the Teams online meeting capabilities of video chat are amazing. At MeTime, we still think there's a big opportunity to help people run meetings more effectively. And we've got an iPhone app out that's a meeting timer to help you plan your agenda. So it's the only timer in the app store that's specifically made for meetings. It helps you start on time and keep on track. If you do go over time, it'll split the rest of the time down for you so that you still finish on time. We think it's really useful and we'd love it if you checked it out. So search for MeTime in the App Store or visit our website at www.metimeapps.com. Both of those will be linked in the description below. So thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.